kids! Today I'm going to read a book from one of my favorite series. It's the Moose series. And this one is called Mosquitoes, A Moose Family Reunion. And it's by Margie Palatini and Henry Cole. Moose was feeling a mite melancholy, a bit blue, sort of sad. He was missing his big moosey family. Why, he hadn't seen them in years. Looking at old family photos was almost bringing him to tears. Moose missed being together, making memories, enjoying good times. He even missed grumpy Uncle Harry and Cousin Curly's bad jokes. Aunt Lurleen's bad cooking. <sighs> Moose sighed. Gosh, how he longed to see all the folks. My poor down in the dumps, dear, said his darling missus. There's no need to pine. Long or be lonesome. Let's plan a party. A reunion and celebration. My love, what do you say to an old-fashioned family vacation? A family reunion vacation? How simple, how easy, how perfectly perfect. Moose calls went out. North to south, east to west, and all the places in between. From the relatives up in Moosachusetts to the kin down in Mississippi, to mooses in Texas, Montana, and even south in Alabama. The whole hairy herd would meet up at their mountain moose lodge. A big family reunion vacation. Moose's moustache curled up in anticipation. He planned three-legged races for the very first day, silly songs for the next. He scheduled swimming and sunning, tanning and fanning, boating, floating, hiking, biking, mornings to fish, time to chat and to dish, and everyone sleeping under the stars. Togetherness, sighed the merry moose, positively, perfectly perfect. With calendars marked with an X and watches synchronized to the second, mooses from coast to coast loaded up cars, packed vans, and stuffed trucks. Toot toot! Honk honk! Lots of goodbye waves and off they went. Caravans chucked up hills, slid down dales, snaked through tunnels, crossed bridges, rivers, this way, that way, left, right, left, right, right to the tippy top of the mountain and Moose Lodge. Auntie's uncle's sister's brothers, each and every cousin piled out to meet and greet. There was lots of moose hugging, cuddling and kissing, handshaking, back slapping, hand clapping, tears and giggles too. It was just as moose had hoped and planned. One big, perfectly perfect family reunion, said Moose, ready with his camera and a click. All together again, now everyone say cheese. Ah, ah, achoo! No, no, that was a sneeze. Moose looked at his darling wife. Her eyes were suddenly bleary and teary, her nose runny and red. I think I'm bloody. She sniffed. I'm going to bed. Before Moose could refocus, Bucky Jr. and the rest of the boys grabbed the volleyball and raced off. Sissy and the girls scooted to the beach. Cousins Larry, Moe, and Curly climbed into a canoe and paddled away on the lake. Great Aunt Matilda trailed off to bird watch for heaven's sake. The kin from Montana vamoosed and went for a hike. Great-great-granny tootled off on her bike. Then the 
cousins from Texas got ornery and started to squabble. The four sisters from Mississippi got into a tiff. Uncle Harry started grumbling and stomped off with a sniff. Stop! Wait! cried Moose, watching them scatter. What about togetherness? Not now! Maybe later! Catch you next time! Mind your own beeswax! Go fly a cot! The family was not playing ball, at least not together. Moose tried, he really tried to find something they all wanted to do. It was not simple, it was not easy, and it did not work. But Moose was still hopeful. He had an idea. The next evening, as daylight faded, the stars came out and everyone trailed back for dinner. Moose was ready and waiting. He had the campfire crackling, stew bubbling, potatoes roasting, marshmallows toasting. Moose got out his banjo and plumped and plinked the favorite sing-along too. He strummed, he hummed, he sang and crooned. Nobody joined in. The kitties were whiny and cranky, the teens tired and barred. Aunt Lurleen yawned. Mo and Larry sat back and snored. Quiet, said Uncle Harry, shuffling off to bed. But what about family togetherness? Moose sighed, sadly eating a s'more, all by his lonesome. As the last campfire flames flickered, the only sound Moose heard was a ribbit solo. And then, from somewhere in the dark, in the quiet, came a then a and a and a oh, ouch! Oh, hey, hey, oh, ouch! Slap, smack, slap, smack, scratch, scratch. Land sakes, it's mosquitoes! cried the Mississippi Annies, wailing with alarm. Blasted buggy biggers, shouted Uncle Tex in the middle of a swarm. Slap, slap, smack, smack, scratch, itch, scratch. Help, mosquitoes, yelled the boys as they tumbled off their cots. Help, mosquitoes, cried the girls, covered with bumpy pink polka dots. Oh my. Do something, my darling, said Mrs. Moose as she, as she scratched between two achoos. But Moose pondered, wondered, worried. What could he really do? Then, suddenly, he rose. One of the biggest mosquitoes had landed right on his nose. Moose gulped and went eye to eye with the big buzzer. They glared. They stared. Who would blink first? And then Moose grinned and smiled. He didn't swat, smack, or swish, but knew exactly what to do. Moose reached into his knapsack for his tried and true moustache glue. Moose ordered one and all to take a heaping hoof full of the white pasty glop. Then Tex lassoed some whiskers from the bottom while the beehive aunties took hold from the top. Herded around in a circle, everyone took a share of Moose hair. Why, even Uncle Harry took part. And with Moose's orchestration, a little humming, and some dandy moosey doosy doos, together they all wove this way, then that way, up, down, front, and back. There was no need to worry, no need to fret. Thanks to Moose and his moustache, the family now had the world's biggest mosquito net. The glued brood was safe, sound, and snug. With Moose smack dab in the middle. Oh yes, it was cramped. 
it was crowded, and Uncle Harry's snores were most definitely loud. But they were together at last, as close as any family could be. Moose sighed. It was a perfectly perfect reunion, even if they did itch. The end. Thanks for watching.